need the four. Hey, what's going on there? This is Wayne with Trey Candy Locksmith Service, and today we're going to be installing the uh, Norton ADA EZ. We're going to be installing it on this door here. Of course, the first step is going to be to get the old hardware off. Uh, once we have the old hardware off, you're then going to get your template, like so, and you're going to have to determine the handing. Uh, if you have your handing and then it's an outswing door, it's actually going to be the reverse of that. So, we'll just take this here. <clears throat> and your hinges will be from the secure side on the left hand side so it would be a left hand reverse door but you're actually going because it's the reverse you're gonna have to use the right-handed template uh, on this door because it's gonna be a push out uh, the next thing that you're gonna have to determine is the door stop if it's an aluminum door it's probably gonna have a blade stop uh, you're gonna use the bottom line if it's less than an inch and a half um, if it's more than an inch and a half, which this obviously is here, it's going to be this whole piece because uh, this is what is actually stopping the door. That's why it's the door stop right there. Uh, if we measure it, it's like two and a half inches, so we're going to use the top line for that. So we'll go ahead and fold that, get the template in place, and go from there. Okay, now that we've selected the top hinge here, or this top fold line, because we have this long, uh, more than more than inch and a half wide doorstop, this is gonna be considered the doorstop here. Uh, that was a little confusing in the instructions, just so you know, this is the actual doorstop, it's this whole piece up here. Uh, and then this center pivot line here is gonna go ahead and tell you, um, you need to be at the center line of the hinge. So if this center line is at the edge of the door, you're most likely wrong uh, because as you can see here, you can see that that hinge, the center of that hinge is about a quarter of an inch off. It's about the thickness of this square, the base of this square. So that line is gonna go just like so. And that's how you can measure that. Okay, now is where you figure out whether you have a uh, center hung or a pivot hung door. And that's going to be determined uh, by this line here. And whether your door is actually swinging in the center or whether you have butt hinges or uh, offset hinges. Um, most doors are probably going to be your uh, butt hinges. This has butt hinges, uh, so we'll be going off of this right here. Uh, if it's, everything's hung directly in the center, then you would go off of this line right here. We just use a square, get our mark, and then go ahead and mark that out just like so. Okay, so now we're going to mount the mounting plate. The mounting plate uh, for this would be used for narrow style doors. It says it right on there because you've got limited room and limited access. You would use this upper plate right here because we've got lots of meat on this door. We're going to use the bottom one. You need to have at least four of these contact points mounted. So if you can mount here, 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 and here, that would be acceptable. Here, 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 and here. Uh, as far as this goes, if you have room to mount all six holes, I would go ahead and do so. I'm going to do so. So we basically just center punch these center punch them all and then um, we'll get ready to drill.
Okay, now that we've got our template out of the way and we've got all our holes marked, this is obviously going to go like so. And you can see how your holes will be marked just like that. Um, <clears throat> this one, this wood door application, I'm going to use the wood screws. Uh, you could use the, um, you could use through bolts or, or sex bolts if you felt that that would be necessary. Uh, I'm actually just going to double up the screws on this one. Uh, so we'll have screws, we'll have probably 12 screws holding this mounting plate in place. Uh, and then we'll go from there and uh, see how that works. Uh, if you, when you're getting these holes mounted, you want to make sure that you're way far away from the glass, be it a wood door or an aluminum frame door, get away from the glass. Make sure that you are well past here in any of your mounting applications. This one, I've got a lot of meat and a lot of room to work with. You may not be so lucky to have that on your end. So just make sure if you're going to be doing this on an aluminum door or a steel door, you'd be using the supplied rib nuts. These would be your supplied rib nut, rib nuts here. Um, definitely, if you're doing this on aluminum or steel door, you want to definitely use your rib nuts. After uh, attaching the screws, um, it was definitely apparent that the sex bolts are going to be very, very much stronger, and we want all the strength that we can possibly have. So we went ahead and used the sex bolts, one, two, three, four, and we will still use these two wood screws here, but the sex bolts are going to be the strongest option, which is what we want. All right, after you have everything uh, just kind of snug, you're gonna wanna make sure that your measurements are exact and make sure that it's straight so it looks good when we're done. We got two and three eighths hanging down there. And we got two and three eighths right there. So we'll go ahead and tighten this thing down. snug everything up and now we're nice flat and level Alrighty, these are the uh, mounting pins here once you have this bracket all mounted. Uh, the upper pins are going to be for medium sized doors and the lower pins are going to be for the lower sized doors. So for this one we're going to use this application right here and these just simply thread right in just like so. Then we'll go ahead and get a wrench and tighten them down. Just like so. Okay, so this is our triangulated bracket here. Um, you can mount this in several different ways. Uh, first of all, it needs to be noted that you need to be within one inch. Uh, or I'm sorry, within five eighths or one and one half inch away from the door frame. So here is five eighths, here is an inch and a half. You wanna get it to where you're gonna get the most support from this. We're not gonna be able to utilize the top mount with this. Uh, normally if you had an overhang uh, and a clearing, like if we were out here, we could go ahead and mount that out there like so along with these screws here. This is a very important piece. It needs to be mounted as sturdy as possible. This is what you measured your center line for. So in this application, we're simply gonna have to use uh, wood screws uh, to, do, to deal with the wood frame, and then we'll space this outer part out. So we're gonna have to mount here or here, anywhere in between. I'm probably gonna mount it right about there. We've got all our holes pre-drilled here. We'll have to use a spacing plate over here. Uh, but other than that, we'll get ready to start screwing this thing in and give it the maximum hold it possibly can.
Ready, now that we've got this installed, you're gonna get a wrench, tighten these down, and then you're gonna install your cover plate, just like so. Makes everything look nice and pretty. Alrighty, so this is our arm mounting shoe here. This just has these two nice little bolts right here that clamp right onto that mounting bracket that we put on, and six and three eighths on the dot is where you wanna be right there. Uh, to the center of the bolt hole uh, from the edge of the door. So then you just go ahead and crank and tighten this sucker down to here, to here, and then you're gonna be perfect. Make sure that you have that correct measurement and make sure if you have any uh, you know, door weather stripping or anything that you account for that. And um, <clears throat> six and three eighths is where you wanna be. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna install and attach the actual uh, motor, drive motor here uh, to the door mounting bracket. It's just gonna slide on. Oh, it's kind of heavy to do with one hand. <clears throat> like so. So that's facing the door over there and this is close to the arm over here and then you're gonna use the supplied um, <clears throat> hex nuts that already have a little Loctite patch on them. Secure these in. Lock them down, tighten them up, and call it good. Very careful when you're using an impact, uh, but if you are careful, you can use it. Don't want to strip or break anything, but it's going to get everything nice and tight and locked down for you. Alrighty, now that you have that fastened and secured on there, uh, it says important, tighten each bolt in a circular manner, that is very important. Uh, so these gonna, are gonna be your three bolts here. This is gonna set right on here like so. Again, this is mounted in the push apparatus here, in the push style. Uh, so it's gonna be flat up against there, it's gonna be 90 degrees like so. And then you're actually, we're just gonna tighten each one of those three down um, in a circle kind of like you would do lug nuts, so that way it's nice and even. Tighten, 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 until it's cinched down on there properly. All right, we're gonna wanna make sure that we have a little bit of uh, tension on this. So you wanna have a little bit of space. I just folded up some cardboard here uh, to, so we don't have to hold it with our hand, but you can feel that resistance. That's what you want. And then it needs to come in and mount to the uh, mounting shoe here. Uh, so this is adjustable just simply by spinning it. So we'll spin it in and then we'll take that bolt out. And when everything looks like it's gonna line up, and it goes straight to the floor. But yeah, so we'll just line that up right there like so. And then when it lines up just right, that'll go ahead and go in there and then we'll be set to go. So you guys will notice that I am using an impact on this. Uh, first of all, it is set on a very light setting and I am very aware uh, that this can, can uh, strip and damage things and cross thread them. Um, so do be aware of that. I recommend you do it by hand, but trying to do this one handed and uh, get some video footage of it. Um, this is about the only way I can really do that. So be very, very careful. Uh, I highly suggest you use a tech tip and use hand tools. Um, other than that, just be very, very careful or use a 12 volt or use it on the lightest setting. Okay, now that we've got that mounted in there, we can test the unit. Go ahead and open the door. You can see that it does come out. Uh, we do have a door stop in place. So that way you wanna make sure that you have a good working door stop so that we're not relying on uh, the machine to stop uh, the door if it gets caught by the wind um, or any dramatic motion. But uh, you can also adjust, there's a spring tension right here on this right in here to where you can adjust that spring tension if it's too much. Factory settings should be pretty good. 
uh, but then it's gonna offer a nice controlled open and close. So the wind really can't get a hold of that. Alrighty, so now we're going to mount the uh, access button. This does not require power. It's actually going to operate off of battery power. Um, so you do not need to bring low voltage to this. That's what makes it a completely wireless unit. Uh, this is going to be the, giving the signal for the door operator to engage. And you want to mount it within 12 feet. Looks like we're going to be right within that here, right at the 11 foot mark. I'm going to mark, uh, mount it right about here. So it's easy uh, for somebody that is disabled in a wheelchair to be able to access and reach. And it's also easy uh, for just a regular person walking in with crutches or somebody standing up. Um, it'll mount really easy right here. They give you the sheet metal screws. Uh, to go ahead and to mount it to steel or they give you tap cons to mount it to brick or you can use wood screws to mount it to wood whatever you prefer that's just going to go there that's going to mount right there <clears throat> we put our holes one two three four and then that button's just going to mount right to that go make sure it's nice and secure which it is and then we'll go ahead and mount the plate on there they give you the two screws and the allen head wrench to do so all right so you get your screws started like so with that allen head and then the floating plate actually has these little notches cut out so you just simply set them right in Make sure that no wires or anything is going to get pinched in there. Set it in, set it on top of there, and then use the Allen key, the Allen, to go ahead and tighten everything down. And then it'll be floating, and people won't even know where those little access screws are. because they are long, long-winded screw. one's going into wood and the supplied screws did not want to hold that well to it so I just used some bigger wood screws to grab a hold of something pretty meaty. You're going to have kids and stuff pulling yanking uh, on this stuff so you want to make sure that it's extra secure. Those big, big lag screws should take care of that. everything's nice make sure everything's nice and springy in all four directions this one I did actually have to trim a little bit off of right there all right now the battery packs gonna plug in it's gonna plug in right here no one plugs in one way and then it just slides right on and clips right in and then you want to have the bottom off so that we can go through the programming features and actually program it which we're gonna do now so to start programming we're going to push enter and select at the same time. 
Enter is going to be over here. Select is here. This is going to get us the flashing that we want. You're going to hold it for at least two seconds. You're going to want to see all those lights light up like so. That's the red. So it knows that we're trying to program it. And then we're going to select Enter for the closed position. So that way it knows that we're in the closed position. And then we're going to open the door to the extended position. And now we'll hit enter again. And it's learning that. And then we're going to let it close. And then we're going to hit enter again. It's going to open to about 30 degrees. And it's learning the weight of the door and how much pressure and power it's going to need. And it's basically learning its operation right now. Now we're going to press enter one more time and get out of programming mode. Or push and hold it, I guess. There we go. Should be out of programming mode now. And we push the button. And voila! She comes open. Everything's blinking, doing what it's supposed to do. And it should come closed, nice and easy. Beautiful. We're gonna test the outer one now. So I'm gonna push the button. And the door will open right up. Thing of beauty. Now, simply tap the back of this, make sure that it's all the way up to there, and then this is going to go right into this piece here, and it's going to lock everything together so that it can't be pulled apart uh, and the battery pack can't be taken off of it. Your on and off switch is going to be under here. Make sure that you know, know where it's at, what position it's in, and that you're at the on position when trying to test. And here you have it. When we started, there was no opener here. Now we have an automatic door opener installed. Opens the door, you can access. Completely wireless. And now we'll close. And then again from the inside, we simply push the button. And it will then let us right out. If you need automatic door opener installation, call Wayne with Trey County Locksmith Service and we'll get you taken care of. Thanks for watching. Just use a little glass cleaner, put your sticker on. Your sticker is going to be a two-way sticker, so it's going to be both ways. Uh, so you can see it inside and out. And uh, make sure that you always put your signage on there so people know that that door can kind of come at them at any moment.